Hey everybody, it is Romania Black, and we're on episodes 23 and 24 of The Untamed. Ugh, it has been a long day, let me tell you. I, I don't know which, how, I don't know how your week has been or weekend has been, but it has been a long day at work, and I was like, I need to decompress, I need to de-stress, I need to watch some Untamed. <laughs> so that's where I'm at in my headspace. Um, before we start episodes 23 and 24, though, I do want to make a comment about next week because some people on Patreon have noted, and some people on YouTube have noted, that in episode 26, apparently episode 26 ends at a very weird time. It, like, the episode cuts off in the middle of a conversation, and episode 27 picks that conversation up. It's weird. So I was talking to people on Patreon and YouTube, and they were telling me about it, and I was like, well, I usually do two episodes a week, but in that case, I don't really want to end at the middle of a conversation. It'd be awkward. So next week, I'm going to be doing three episodes, which is highly unusual. I'm going to be doing episodes 25, 26, and 27. We'll be over the halfway point then. And then someone on YouTube was also saying that there is one more part one more set of episodes where that happens. I think maybe it's 31, 32, and 33. I can't remember exactly. But so we'll have two sets of episodes in this series where I do three instead of two. And that's fine because even if I get The Untamed finished that way before the novel, I still have the two movies to react to that are with The Untamed. So it's fine. It's fine. But just to give you a heads up, next week will be considerably longer. It's going to be a longer reaction next week because we'll have uh, three instead of two. So that's exciting, right? So I'm pretty uh, amped to see what all happens. Last set of episodes, uh, our dear boy Wushin, he is he is going down the yielding rabbit hole indeed. And ye, we got Ching, but we don't know where Ning is. And just things are things are slowly falling into place. And I'm I'm curious what we're gonna go do with this, but. Let's find out, shall we? We're, we're confronting Ruhan, and Yao came in. He had his customer service smile, like he's about to quit, about to quit his job, you know, like you do. Let, let's see what ends up happening with him, shall we? I'm pretty excited. Um, I hope you all enjoy de-stressing and fangirling and enjoying The Untamed with me, because if anything's going to make my day better, it's going to be The Untamed. So with that being said, we're going to start episode 23 here in 3, 2, one and just see, you know, is Yao gonna kill Ruhan in these episodes? Let's find out, shall we? Let's do this. Ugh. <laughs> I took so many notes for these episodes. There's a there's a lot happening in these episodes. There's quite a lot happening in this episode. Oh my gosh. Huh. Oh. Man, at, at at this point, I I find it fitting that we end with Wuxian saying that, you know, it's not so hard to go back to the good old days. And this is at the halfway point of the series. Like, we're smack dab in the halfway point. Like, next episode's episode 25, which is the halfway point of the season. So it's fitting that Wuxian's like, everything's going to be fine. <laughs> it's like, mm. So there's actually a lot happening in this episode. And I there's some things that the, that the Untamed does a little bit differently from the Donghua that I'm, again, I love the Donghua, absolutely, but the way that they do Wuxian's struggle with being the Yuling Patriarch and having all this resentful energy in him is done really, really well. It's very subtle, and what I like that this show does is it constantly reminds us as the audience that Wuxian really doesn't have a choice in the matter. He has to use the resentful energy to do any type of cultivation because he doesn't have a choice. And these characters throughout these two episodes keep bringing up to him, they're like, why aren't you practicing with your sword? Why aren't you doing this with your sword? Why aren't you practicing your cultivation? And Wuxian's like, I can't. But he can't tell them that. Like we have Cheng getting frustrated because Wuxian's not practicing with his sword. We have Zhishin kind of subtly being like, oh, well, I just used my golden core to get rid of the alcohol. And Wuxian's like, I don't have that luxury anymore, so I am getting drunk. And it's like, ah! It's just, it kept getting brought up, and it was just like blow after blow after blow, just reminding Wuxian that he's not what he once was, and he can't be any longer. And it's like... And meanwhile, Wanji's like, I want to help him. And so I need to learn this soothing music to play for him. And so I'm going to practice and go to the Forbidden Library and do all this. It's just, these episodes were really, really good. So, man, and we introduced the Tiger Amulet. We introduced the Tiger Amulet, finally. So I made a note on here. I'm assuming that the sword that was from the Tortoise Cave is what was forged into the Tiger Amulet. That's correct, right? 
that the sword, pieces of the sword were forged to make the tiger amulet. Not the yin iron. This is something totally different. Yang still has the piece of the yin iron. To make note. Yao killing Ruhan means you didn't see it. I found that very curious that, that Yao killed Ruhan and Mingju didn't see it, unlike in the Donghua and unlike in the novel. it was The setup was a little bit differently than how it played in those other two adaptations, which it was fine. It was just very interesting. And the idea of Jishin getting between Yao and Mingju and God, Jishin's actor, like getting emotional and being like, like struggling to hold back and, and Yao clutching the damn robes. It's like, uh, Yao's actor was on fire this episode. He was so good. So good. There were so many like little expressions that he gave that I was like, oh, it's so wonderful. But yeah, and then Yao just looking like a little baby face. I don't like the hat. I've never been a hat person personally, and the hat does not suit Yao at all. It just, it, it makes him look awkward, which, which Yao's position is kind of awkward in this, so I guess it's fitting, right? And so... God, Yanli. Yanli was whooshing in the aftermath of all this. The fact that she she wants him to quit the whole Yiling patriarch thing. Does she know? I'm assuming she knows he doesn't have his core, right? Because at the very end there, she's like, are you tired of being here? Because you just get constantly reminded of what you can't do. And he's like, no, I love you all. So I'm like, does she know that his golden core is gone? It seems like she does. It seems like she knows what's up. And then the fact that Wanji played music for him like twice a day... Come on. And when Wuxian was like, how do you know that you like someone? She's like, tell me more. And he's like, well, I don't know. Uh, you know, Lon, you want Yanli was just waiting for the gossip. She was like, are you admitting that you like Wanji? Tell me more. And it's like, mm. So, yeah. Um, but uh, the whole talk about the Yin Iron being gone and Wanji and Wuxian having this question of trust. And Wuxian's like, trust me, I'm not lying to you. And Wanji's like, I want to trust you, but there is some reservation there. And the the sound of the winds being killed outside while they're having this conversation was so creepy and disturbing. Even they were like, like looked over, like the idea of just killing like 600 people while you're having a conversation with your friend. It's like, it, it's, it was really disturbing actually, but it was really well done. Um, so, <laughs> Jishin... Does it, Jishin made the point, I'm trying to read my notes, which my notes are scribbles at this point. But Jishin was making a plea to old Daddy Jin, being like, let's spare the women and children. And at first, I thought Mingzhu was more on Daddy Jin's side. But by the end of it, Mingzhu is in agreement with, with Jishin. He wants the women and children spared. And so Yao knows of a place, knows of a place they can all go to in the mountains. We'll just corral everybody here to this little village and they can live there and not and not be out and be out of the way and not a problem. So uh, Daddy Jin, they're still looking for that missing piece of the yin iron. And Daddy Jin, he's so slimy. He's my least favorite character in the entire series um, for good reason. But he, that whole line of um, we need to watch out for the winds and then other people with ambitions. It's like that covers a, a large amount of sins, but Jishin immediately knows who he's talking about. He's talking about Wuxian. It's like, mm-hmm. And then, yeah, putting Yao in charge of the investigation. Something that's very interesting about these two episodes, too, is that Daddy Jin instantly, well, not, not instantly, but since the battle, Daddy Jin has welcomed Yao into the fold, whereas in the novel in Donghua, that was like he was excluded almost to the point unless they were so desperate they needed him. But here, the dad's, like, giving him things to do, putting him in charge of, like, being a host, things like that. And I love, I love what Jishin called... Uh, Yao when they all formally met up and everybody's saying like his form Yao's new formal name and Jishin's like I Yao and it's like oh still familiar can't get over it but yeah Yao dressed in the new robes putting um, the winds in the valley getting that um, Daddy Jin's what do I got here yeah Daddy Jin's like look to Yao like there are several times where he looked at Yao just like evaluating him it's so awkward but that conversation with Yao and Jishin where Yao's talking about should I have um let's see what did I just put here should he have killed the hot it looked like Yao killed the hostages it looked like he killed them the ones that were taken in by the winds because we saw the blood under the door but then that quote that Yao says to Jishin when Jishin is like you know it's just we can't stand evil things and what forth and Yao's like Am I the evil one? And it's like, 
It's like, that's not what he's saying, but yeah. And I don't think Yao's evil, but he's so complicated and he has such like morally gray decisions that he makes. But the fact that he calls Jishin out and asking him is interesting. So Wanji asks, Wanji makes the note to Wushin that he's helping to keep him safe. And that's why he's trying to help him. He questions him. And then, uh, and then, then we get, they, they're in the middle of this argument and finding out things about each other when we get old old Zhushan old Jin the, the Jin uncle guy from the last episode the old Zhushan you guys gave me his name that he's around killing winds and shooting arrows at him he's such a prick he's such an annoying character and then of course Wushin and Wanji are like we're having none of this injustice and that moment where they hold hands like I almost missed it I was writing something down I looked up and was like <gasps> like how dare you show they like held hands for the briefest of time and I love that that's where I get I'm so starved for Wang Shin goodness that I'm like they held hands oh my god like you just that this show does that to you it makes you get in that mindset so them playing together that that part up until the part where they were playing together the episode had been like really tight and really fast paced and everything and then they they started to play and it was like such a calming moment and i like the idea that wanji is trying to learn these musical numbers and everything these scores so he can help wushin calm down and keep the resentful energy at bay he's doing it all for wushin there's like no benefit to himself and it seemed um at the beginning, at this point in the episode, I was like, it, start, it, it was starting to drag just a little bit, but then it picked back up when we got to the three brothers. Episode 23 couldn't decide when it wanted to end. It was like Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. It had like three endings. And so there was them playing together, and I thought that was the end. And then there was the three brothers, and then starting the whole thing with um, the throne. But, oh my god, this episode had so much going on in it. So... The three brothers, they all do their swearing and everything. And then we go to the Nightless City and everybody's talking up Yao. And seeing Yao's expression as he's walking around, he's like soaking it all in. He's like, they're all talking about me. But it's like in a positive way, right? And Yao's not used to being talked about in a positive way. So he's like, oh my gosh. Like he's so happy about it. And you can't blame him. You can't blame him for being happy. Um, but it's just... And then Daddy Jin, Daddy Jin being so ingenuine, I hated that moment where he's like, he he kind of like questions why they're in mourning gear, and then Chang's like, we just lost our family. He's like, oh yeah, I was really good friends with your dad. I'm like, were you? Were you? Because you just you barely remembered that they had died. And then then there's the throne thing, and Ming was like, I'm not sitting on that throne because I just had to suffer next to that guy and your kid. No, and I and I do appreciate Ming Zhu is like his sense of justice that he's like, I'm not doing it. I'm not above anybody else. I'm like, good on you, Mingju. Good on you. But man, that smile when Yao tells Wushin, he's like, sit. I was like, that that fake persona, that fake customer service smile, terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. And so then, yeah, Daddy Jin, everybody getting a drink. And then we have the whole scene ending episode 23 right before Wushin comes in. Like, I, I'm sorry, but that was so callous and rude of Daddy Jin when he's just like, so now that we're all here gathered, he's like, I guess my son better go propose to the girl. Like, it felt like very much like Gaston in Beauty and the Beast when Gaston just shows up at Belle's house and he's like, I'm here to marry you. And she's like, what? I felt like that because Daddy Jin, he just puts Yanli and Chang on the spot. He's like, so your marriage was called off but now that the war's over how about we put it back on Chang what do you think your sister should do and it's like and Chang is Chang once Chang basically wanted to say what Wuxian said but he was in his head going okay as the clan leader how do I need to go about this and of course that causes him to take some extra time and then Wuxian's wasting no time he's like let me tell you what I think and it's like mm. and I agree with them it should be Yan Li's decision and it's really sucky of that of Daddy Jin to put her on the spot and be like, hey, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? And she's like, ah. Which I do think that she likes Ishwan, obviously. But it needs to be on her own terms. And she's like, you can't just you can't just spring a surprise wedding on somebody. Nine times out of ten doesn't work. Might get that crazy person that's into it. But nine times out of ten, no. Probably not going to work. But yeah, Wuxian shows up. And when Wuxian shows up, Yao has the biggest smirk on his face. He's just like... Like, he knew that Wushin was going to be a troublemaker. It's like, mm-hmm. And then Yanli standing up for herself and talking just about how 
you know, she's not ready. She needs some time to think about it. She didn't reject him, but she was just like, um, I'm in mourning and I need to think of my clan, so I'll come back later. And then Yao changes the subject. He's like, oh, hey, let's let's transition to out of this awkward conversation. So in a month, come to my dad's house. We're going to host a hunt free of charge. And it works. It gets everybody's mind on something different. And it's interesting. He invites everybody to participate. And the, and everybody's like, oh, this hunt's going to be so expensive. And it's like, well, Daddy Jin can afford it. So it gives it some legitimacy, right? So, yeah, we get the last pictures of the yin iron. The last piece of the yin iron is with Yang. And, man, I, you know what? I like Yao's character a lot in this, but he really threw Wuxian under the bus. He really did. He was just like, I don't know. And then he tried to correct it. He felt guilty and he tried to correct it. He's like, I don't know. Wuxian could have the last piece of the yin iron. And then when, you know, Daddy Jim was getting all excited, he was like, well, or maybe not, but he might have it, but he might not. And it's like, Yao, what are you doing? And then when he's like, Yao's going to send a spy after him? <sighs> nope, 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 nope. I love the visual, though, when they enter Lotus Pier again. And it's like the world's turned upside down. And the cinematography of like flipping the world back over. That was so well done. I loved it. Um, Chang being, um, when he smacked down the wind sign with Zidian. That was satisfying. Wuxia wanted to do it. But it, it made sense for Chang to do it. Because it was his his father and mother. And then, yeah, Wanji. Wanji and Chirin and Jishin. That whole scene. I, I feel so bad for Wanji because he's like, he's on a mission. He wants to get the forbidden books. He wants to learn some scores. And Kieran just, Kieran just does not want him around Wuxian. So he's like, you, you write out all these 3,000 rules and then we'll talk. And it's like, that's so unreasonable. And then he gets locked on the cellar with the music. But that really wasn't his choice. But yeah, Kieran really doesn't want Wanji around Wuxian, thinking he's a bad influence. And Wanji wants to be around Wuxian to be good influence. So it's, it's like, who's going to win there? <sighs> But then, yeah, Cheng becomes the clan leader. And I really like that scene. Their clan's so small. But he becomes the clan leader. Um, and he has a lot of Madam Yu in him when he's going around that group teaching him a sword bite. He's got a lot of Madam Yu's temperament and uh, kind of like mannerisms to him, which are interesting. They kind of mirror her in a sense. And then, yeah, so Wuxian's been running off. And at first I was like, why would Wuxian, Wuxian just constantly run off? But then you realize Wuxian doesn't have a golden core he can't cultivate, so he runs off to just get away from them so that they won't question him. And that's so sad because as we see with him and Yanli at the end, he just, he benefits so much from having that company and it's just, you know what's going to happen, right? You know what's going to happen. So as we're watching this, I'm like, I'm like, man, it's heartbreaking because I know how this is going to go down and it's, it's not cool. <laughs> but yeah, so Yanli knows... And then we have Jishin and Wuxian drinking together. I never thought I would see these two having a drinking scene together. And you know what? Jishin can match him. Jishin can, can fire back fire back the comebacks left and right. I was like, ooh, Jishin's, Jishin's holding his own in this conversation with Wuxian. I kind of love it. I love that we have our two brother-in-laws, um, you know, having a drink together, talking about, you know, Jishin's brother and Wuxian's husband. It's great. It's a good time. But yeah, I just, I did not expect that we'd have a scene like that. And it's a really good scene because Jishin makes the point. He's like, people care about you and your actions. You may think that your actions don't affect yourself, but they affect other people. So you need to be careful. And Wushin's like, fine. You know, one of those moments. But yeah, crazy talk. And then Wushin, he tries to fire back and be like, well, maybe I am a prodigy. And it's like cocky whooshing like that it's like it, when it's fun and innocent I like it but in this case when it's a little bit condescending I'm like oh, dude don't and again it's that slow and subtle build of how this resentful energy and how everything around whooshing is negatively affecting him it's really well done it really is but yeah whooshing can't use the sword everybody keeps bringing it up it's a problem and then I when Yanli was crying and she's like, you just want to leave. And it's like, no, he doesn't want to leave. He just can't be around you all. It's like, it's so heartbreaking. Yanli really is the glue holding everything together at this point. Without Yanli, Wuxian and Chang's relationship is going to crumble. And it does. If you've read the novel, you know. 
Um, or if you've watched the Dongwa, I've not read the novel up until this point, but I've watched the Dongwa, so I know kind of what happens. Um, but yeah, it's just really, really sad that she's just literally holding them together at this point. And then we have the flashback of Fang Mian adopting Wuxian, and it's all explained, him getting in the family. And then, then Wuxian says, how do you know if you like somebody? And Yan Li's like, what? <laughs> like she'd been half paying attention, and so she's like, hold on, what'd you say? And that was such a really sweet moment. I love that too. But yeah, and then and then finally we have the talk about Zishuan. And I do feel like if you didn't know Zishuan, Wuxian's concern about him being a younger version of Daddy Jin is pretty valid because Wuxian wants his sister to be loved. And he's like, what if Zishuan is a playboy like his dad? Our sister doesn't need that. But luckily, Zishuan is not. Um, he's not like Daddy Jin. And then... Uh, it's like these two are realizing in that moment, in that moment, he was questioning. He's like, Yan Li, he's like, Zishuan has, he's, Zishuan's so boring and he's just a peacock. Why would Yan Li like anybody like that? And then he realizes, oh, I like Wanji and he's kind of, he's not a peacock, but he's kind of like that. He's kind of straight laced and super serious. Womp womp. And he kind of gets exactly what she feels. But yeah, I love our sibling shenanigans at the end of this, like them just being siblings and enjoying everything and being happy. It's like you want to enjoy it because you know what's coming. Again, I've not read in the novel. I'm only up to um, in the novel. I am only up to the flashback right now before Nightless Sea. It's, I'm not even to the. I'm not to the Lotus Pier burning yet. I'm almost to the, this week's chapter was the Lotus Pier set up, and next week's going to be the Lotus Pier burning. So getting closer to the Alien Patriarch, but. I don't know anything that happens to the novel past Lilo's Pure Burning. And so it's going to be interesting to see how this all varies from the Donghua to the Untamed to the novel itself. So, fun times! But yeah, this was a great set of episodes. I really loved it. I hope you all enjoyed my ramblings and had fun with that too. It was good to fangirl, right? Made the day go by, uh, made the day end on a really good note. So, yeah, next week, three episodes, 25, 26, and 27 a two-time only event <laughs> with this series. But um, but yeah, as soon as people were saying, at first I was going to be like, no, I'm sticking to the two episode, a reaction rule. And then somebody was like, well, actually the episode ends mid-conversation. And I was like, well, now I got to watch it. <laughs> so next week is going to be episodes 25, 26, and 27. And we'll go from there. So in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and yeah. I'll be back next week with uh, three episodes of The Untamed. Bye.